Hello. Privilege. What's the meaning of privilege? I have quite a unique perspective on privilege because once I had it, now I don't. Mm. It's an interesting concept, privilege. When you've got it, you don't actually know you've got it. It's just how it is. It's just how life is. Nothing special. But when you don't have it and someone else over there does, then you sure as hell notice. So, let's see if I can make this work. Hello, my name is Kathy Parker and I'm a transgender woman. But if that's all you know about me, you don't know very much, any more than I'd know about you if I knew your ethnicity or your eye colour. So I'll tell you a bit more about me. I'm a proud parent of two wonderful teenage daughters. I'm a magazine publisher. I'm a business owner and employer. I'm an engineer, I have an engineering degree. I'm a basketball coach and manager for my daughter's basketball team. I'm a board member on a number of not-for-profit boards and industry boards, and if this works, I'm a wheelchair basketball player. But being transgender, as I say, is only part of me, and to me and the people that know me, it's probably one of the least important parts, although it might be the first thing people that come up to me notice. So I tick a number of diversity boxes. I've had a very diverse career. I started out with an engineering degree. I then got a management cadetship with a major corporate called Ceramco. Worked in a number of engineering, sales and management roles in various corporates until 25 years ago I bought a couple of magazines and got into magazine publishing. So there's a bit of a common thread, a couple of media people at the beginning of it here. Um, and then two weeks ago I'm looking to take, as May mentioned before, I just did the Institute of Directors, Company Directors course because I'd like to give myself a new challenge and look to take on some directorships going forward. So 12 years ago when I went through my major change in life, Things weren't too bad, and I was lucky. I had my own business. I couldn't, didn't have to worry about being fired. But I did have to worry about bringing my staff and my clients along, because if they'd all left, I wouldn't have had a business. So we, yeah, I had to deal with a personal issue myself, but with my then business partner, we sat down and actually looked at it as a strategic planning issue. Because if we didn't do it, the business might not survive. We did a SWOT analysis. We brought in an outside person to be there when I told all my staff, and so they had someone they could talk to freely afterwards. Now, 12 years on, the landscape out there is a hell of a lot better. I've helped a number of people transition at work, helped them and their employers, and look, the big corporates just get it now. They've got rainbow tick policies in place, they know about it. If they don't have a policy in place, they want to do it right, and they're really happy to talk to someone like me to help them achieve that. Whereas 12 years ago it was more, mm, can we get rid of this person, or hey, if we can't get rid of them, can we hide them back here somewhere in a room where no one has to see them because they're a bit embarrassing? So now we've got transgender people in the police, Air Force, Navy, university lecturers, and big corporates, and that's just the ones I know. So coming back to privilege, as I say, I had it, I lost it. But I'm still relatively privileged if you look at the privileged bingo up there. <laughs> I can tick quite a few of those. I'm European, I'm educated, I have a job. At least according to that, I'm, I'm privileged because I'm not a ginger. <laughs> but my, my beautiful red-headed daughter might disagree that that's actually a disadvantage. In fact, I'm sure, she, I'm sure she would. So when I was putting this together, people said, why don't you put an anecdote in on what it's like to have privilege? And I thought, actually I can't, because having privilege is just how it is. There's nothing you can really say about it. But I do have some interesting ones about what it's like now that I don't have that privilege. So I'm on an industry board. I've been on it for 15 years. Everyone tells me what a great job I do on it. They have a ro they, the chair and the deputy chair are rolling, but I've never actually been considered for those. Now, maybe that's because they don't think I'm good enough, but maybe it's not. That's the challenge around privilege and diversity and discrimination. You never quite know why it is that you haven't got there. And I don't think it's even conscious. It's more about people are much more comfortable working and doing things with people like them. Mm. I think that's the nub of it. Another great one, I often get involved in discussions around technology and cars. Now when I was, when I was seen as being male, my voice was listened to. As a male it was assumed you knew about those kind of things, <laughs> even if you didn't. <laughs> now as a woman, I feel like I'm invisible. What would a girl know about cars or technology? But I'm probably the best qualified one in the discussion quite often. I've got an engineering degree. 
I built and drove a rally car for several years. I managed a fleet of 10,000 cars when I worked in the, in the car leasing business. And for the last 25 years, I've tested and written about cars in one of my magazines. But hey, what would a girl know about cars? <laughs> Another great example was not long after I transitioned, I went with a female friend to, she was looking to buy a car, we went into a car dealership. Talk about an education in mansplaining. <laughs> From a guy that actually didn't know much about cars, she was actually an engineer as well and she used to drive off-road racing cars. We knew a hell of a lot more about cars than he did, but hey, what would girls know about cars, right? <laughs> Another great example, came up to an event in the domain, I think it was Christmas in the park, it was quite a few years ago. Came with a group of friends, we'd parked down the bottom of Parnell, <coughs> and we met up with another group of people, and at the end, one of the guys jumps up and said, this is the way to go back to the car, and I'm sitting there going, um, um, excuse me, I don't think it would be much easier to go that way, and it's, oh, well, you're a girl, you can't read maps, you know, so everybody followed the guy, and we went around in a big circle, and it took 10 or 15 minutes longer to get back to the car. But that's just how it is. The, the other big thing I find is around safety, or the lack of feeling safe. As a male, I pretty much felt safe all the time. Now as a female, walking back to the car late at night in the dark, not so much. And walking down Queen Street as a group of drunken teenage boys or drunken men, I feel doubly unsafe, both as a female and as a transgender woman, because they might just decide to beat up on me for sport. So you know, there's some of the things you have to think about. So how far have we come? So 40 years ago, I did an engineering degree at Auckland University down the road here. In my year, there were 200 people studying engineering. There were five women, and I'm not counting myself as one of those. My eldest daughter, Claire, is now at that same engineering school in her third year. There's now 800 people in a year, which is great, because we need more engineers. And there's about 27% women, so we're still not at 50%, but we're getting there. And she's doing chemical and materials, which is a bit over 30% female, which is really great as well. And the university's doing great stuff. They have a women's only ingenuity day each year for the year 13 students looking to come. They have a women in engineering program which mentors the girls and does events for them and tries to bring them along. And even industry's getting it. One of the big engineering consulting firms, AECOM, they said in 2016, 50% of their graduate engineering intake in New Zealand and Australia was female, which is well above the number studying. So you know, <coughs> people, are, people are just getting that. So this, in, this International Women's Day is all around press for progress. Whilst we have progressed, I forgot a slide before, no I didn't, it's not there. Whilst we have progressed, there's still a lot to do. Gender equality needs to be just like privilege, something that's there, something you don't have to think about, you don't have to talk about, it just is. And we're not there yet. So I'm trying to do some, do some work in some of the areas I'm in. As I say, I play wheelchair basketball. So last year a small group of us got together and did the first ever women's wheelchair basketball tournament in New Zealand. We had 15 people turn up. We've got the second one coming up in three weeks' time and hopefully we'll get even more. We're now running women-only training sessions once a month. Two years ago I went for the first time to Sydney to the Women's Festival of Wheelchair Basketball in Australia with one other teammate. Tomorrow I'm jumping on a plane to Sydney to this year's one and there's four women from New Zealand going to that. And we get top level coaching here, like the gliders, their Paralympic team coach comes along and coaches. So great experience for those people to do that. The other thing I've been involved in obviously is super diverse women and there's quite a few of our members here tonight. And that's all about rev relative privilege. If we go back to the, to the privilege bingo, it's people that don't just have less privilege because they're women, they have less privilege because of their ethnicity their sexuality, their disability, their religion, or often two or three of those put together, making it really hard for them. And I get, I know I'm in the media, but I get really annoyed when the media talk about diversity, because diversity in the media is just shorthand for male-female balance. They don't think about all these other diversities. They don't, for some reason, they don't count. That's not part of the equation. So gender equality needs to be equality for all women, not just some privileged women. We have made progress, but we need to make sure that progress is for all women, including our super diverse women, and that diversity, discussions around diversity are not just around gender balance, but for everybody. Thank you very much.